Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and today we are back with another dun, dun. mukbang. Woo. So today we've got an entire Taco Bell spread. Can I just be honest? For the past like, I forget what it was, maybe like two weeks ago, my sister was telling me the Mexican pizza at Taco Bell is banging. It's so good. So what do I do? I go to Taco Bell to order it and they don't have it. Okay, I was like, where, where's the pizza? Yeah, the Mexican pizza is not here. I saw her on FaceTime. It looked delicious. Mm -hmm. And now I don't have a Mexican pizza. So I got a whole oh. bunch of other things. I have a toasted cheddar chalupa, regular chalupas, the nacho Doritos Locos Tacos, nachos, uh, burritos, a giant thing of queso that I'm going to dip everything into. Yes. And I just want to say, you know that tip online? This is kind of random, but like bear with me, okay? You know that tip online that's like, don't ever have your headphones in or else someone will think you're vulnerable and they'll try to snatch you? Don't stay distracted. Don't be out there doing your hot girl walks with your big chunky headphones and that's not gonna be good for you. And I stand by that. But sometimes, I do want to listen to music. Sometimes I do want to throw on Rotten Mango, a true crime podcast on my hot girl walk. And I love that with my Raycon earbuds, I can do both of those things. I can be aware of what's going on around me and still listen to my favorite podcast, Rotten Mango. You can still hear what's going on. It just elevates the walks. But when I'm at home and I'm wearing my Raycon earbuds to edit, I turn on the noise isolation mode so I can be totally immersed in my editing. I love the fact that the awareness mode, like, Truly, I feel like I'm being alert. I don't feel like I'm distracted. And then with the noise isolation mode, I feel like I'm in my own little cocoon and I don't have all this ex extra outside background noise to distract me. And you guys know how much I love my Raycons. I don't shut up about them. It's one of those things that I use every day and it kind of just checks every box for me. They've got optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. They're so comfortable and they won't budge. Did I tell you guys about the time that I used a different earbud once before I had Raycons? Fell asleep on a plane, fell off. I had to get flight attendants to help me find it. It was a whole ordeal. But with Raycons, you don't have to worry about that. And it's got eight hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life. And the pricing is honestly my favorite part. You get quality audio at half the price as other premium audio brands. It just makes sense, okay? That's why Raycon Everyday Earbuds have over 49,000 five star reviews. They've got bass boosted sound, which is great for bass lovers. If you like hip hop, EDM, R&B, reggae music. Then they have other sound modes like pure sound for audiobook and podcast listening, balanced sound for when you're listening to classical jazz, blues, rock music, pop music. Listen, it's just gonna be a feast inside your holes, inside your ear holes. So make sure to go to buyraycon.com slash biz for 15% off of your order. That's buyraycon.com slash biz for 15% off your order. And thank you Raycon for sponsoring today's video and let's get into the food. I'm so excited. Oh. What's going on? Where should we start? Wait, can I do a cheese pull? Yes. Please. Is Go there in. a pool? Oh, oh yeah, wait, there, hold on. there is a pool. Wow. Jeez. Okay, well, since it's here, I'm gonna wrap it around something. I'm gonna get a toasted cheddar chalupa because it's cheese on top of cheese, and then I'm going <gasps> to. <laughs> this God is stupid. Leaf. This is oh stupid. This is ridiculous. I'm gonna be honest. This is awesome. ridiculous. Okay, should I try it? Let's go. Is it good? Wow. All right. <laughs> Okay, mm. I guess um, I'm gonna then. start with. I will help you make one as mm -hmm. well. Oh my oh, god. Oh, is that the chalupa? I bet, bet, bet. You like chalupa? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm, me too. Wow. Oh my what god. is this? What? Is that a queso? It's a queso dip. Holy moly. Is it not fantastic? Like, are you kidding? Oh wow. Wait, hold up. Mm. Wow. The dip has meat mm. at the bottom and vegetables, you know? Wait, it does have pizza. Right? It's so good. Wow. Wow. Okay, I'm oh, getting wow. this burrito. Oh my god. So freaking good. No, actually, no. And I'm going to cover this. Oh, that's this insane. This dip is awesome. Oh, oh. Mm. Oh, that's insane. Can you see this? What the? I'm so happy. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. The amount of cheese in there is just oh. massive. Wow. Oh my How god. This? Yeah. So good. What is it? A beef burrito? burrito? Yeah, it's a burrito. Mmm. Huh. Mmm. 
no gol. This this dip oh my is God. the best wow. dip I've had in my career. It's been a while, too. <laughs> in your career of cheese dips? I thought you were going to say in my relationship. Oh, no, no, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, the meat at the bottom is just a new game changer. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to get these potatoes. Mm. Oh my god. The nachos? Mmm, you're right. Mm. It's good. Mm hmm. The meat, right? Mm hmm. Okay, just imagine it's Thanksgiving, maybe Christmas, your whole extended family. Yeah, all the weird aunts. The weird uncles that judge everything on your plates, they're all there. And that one uncle in the corner, he finally speaks up and his words are, well, the moon landing never happened. It was fake. Apollo 11 didn't fucking happen. Humans never went on the moon. And if the schools were teaching you that they did, boycott him. Canceled. <laughs> mm -hmm. what, what would you do in that situation? I would go, <laughs> man, man. <laughs> Disagree. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> no need to argue. Know. What would you do in that situation? Just agree. Yeah, just agree, bro. Just agree. Mm -hmm. There's a quote. You can maybe win an argument with an arrogant pe person, mm. but you can't. It's impossible to win against dumb people because. Mm. I thought you said you can never win against your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah, you can never. Bro, your uncle? No. <laughs> and I'm an uncle. Yeah. So I know. Bro, he keeps, he's not even oh, talking yeah. about Sophie, he's talking about Wei Wei and JJ. <laughs> that he's an uncle to like a 19 year old. I'm serious. <laughs> That's so weird. It's so weird. I still don't know, understand how that works. Mm -hmm. What's wild is that, surprisingly enough, I think the fake moon landing conspiracy is one of the most fascinating conspiracies because it almost feels inconsequential. Like, is it really important that we did or we did not get to the moon? Because at the end of the day, it was a just a dick measuring contest between the US and the USSR. That's pretty much it. Whose spaceship is bigger? Whose rocket is bigger? Let's compare sizes and let them touch each other and make out. And like getting on the moon did not get us equality or free healthcare or technically anything. So like why the passion? I think that's so fascinating. Yeah, why the and passion? And there is so much online discourse about it. So let's dive into why people think we never landed on the motherfucking moon. Okay. Let's start war. There's this picture right here. Neil Armstrong took this picture of himself, and, I mean, of his shadow on the surface of the moon, and conspiracy theorists are really upset. Technically, the picture is Neil Armstrong's astronaut shadow right here, right? Mm -hmm. And there's like a little landing thing that he had landed, another object, but it's going like this. Okay. It's not standing upright. The so shadow. the shadow is not parallel. Oh. And the two shadows should be parallel. And um, that's fucking that. That's what people said. The next reasoning is that the radiation around the Earth, the Van, Van something belts. You guys know what I'm talking uh, about. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they, it would have killed them. They would be experiencing the effects of radiation like the radium girls, which we recently covered on a podcast. So like, why didn't all the astronauts die very, very similar deaths. Why did the radiation not eat their bones alive and decay them from the inside? Because, duh, we never went to the moon. Reason number three. Why are there no stars in the picture? Why no fucking stars? The sky should be filled with stars. There's no clouds on the moon. So where the fuck are the stars, Karen? Maybe you guys are in some little whack little studio off Universal. Maybe this is Walt Disney. So you can budget in the stars because imagine the stars from the moon's perspective, not even the Earth's perspective. The lunar sky would have been out of this world. Okay, to make them look real enough, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have worked. That's why no star. Why no Star Spangled Banner? Huh? <laughs> also, side note, conspiracy point. If we've been to the moon, why don't we go back? Nobody has ever gone back. You don't think that's a little sketchy? <laughs> maybe, maybe kicking off another conspiracy here. Let's say NASA isn't lying to us. Maybe, 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 just maybe. We did go to the moon, okay? But let's say we did, maybe. Mm -hmm. We saw something so terrifying that we'll never go back to the moon. That's what's going on. And probably <laughs> the biggest conspiracy of them all is that Apollo 11, the US flag is a waving in the wind. There's no wind on the moon. So who the f bought the wind machines to set? Exactly answer me that riddle me that you little ass bitch 
That's so aggressive. I'm so sorry. I was really in the role of one of your aggressive uncles at family dinner, okay? So I'm going to tell you guys why all of that makes no sense at the end of the video. But first, we have to talk about the moon landing. Also, imagine someone just watches this part of the video and never watches till the end. And they leave the video thinking, yeah, the moon landing makes no oh, sense. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> and now, ironically, in trying to prove that the moon landing was real, I have now convinced someone that it was fake. So, I mean, why did humans even want to go to the moon so badly to begin with? If yeah. I'm being honest with you, I think humans have this innate want to like fuck shit up. <laughs> like, how many people in your life, and I'm, I'm genuinely asking this question, yeah, yeah. how many people in your life would you trust with a button, okay? With the button? This is the button. And you tell them, hey, this button, if you press the button, the earth will literally implode. It'll explode. Like a firecracker is inside of the watermelon, just poof. Let me see. <laughs> but you can only tell this person one time and they will have this button for the rest of their lives. How many people in your life do you wholeheartedly trust to keep that button until they die, making sure it never gets pressed? Zero. Yeah, this guy would never make it, okay? <laughs> Because my fiance's way what? of testing if something is good quality is <laughs> using his full manpower so to try and break it. What's it made out of? Wow. I don't do that. Good man. quality. I give it a good squeeze. <laughs> what the frick? Everything. He's just got to test it just enough to know, okay, it's not going to break if 300 pounds body slams this onto the ground. And if it breaks, what does he do? He sits there, jaw on the ground, <laughs> staring at me, go, I don't know how this <laughs> happened. I don't know how this happened. Okay, this guy would what? forget in a year and press the button. Okay, and then he would true, be like, true. my bad, seriously, no cap guys, I totally forgot. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> so like, why are we so obsessed with the moon? Maybe we just want to ruin the moon too. I think there is also this mystical element to the moon. It feels like the moon means something, doesn't it? Moon? Yeah. Opportunity. Yeah. To the moon. To the moon. Oh, yeah. You guys have yeah. moon tattoos. Yeah, yeah then I love the moon. <laughs> like, I think it's cookie though. <laughs> <laughs> so, someone said that we think that full moons and blue moons mean something. But also, when we learn that the moon affected water by its effect on ocean tides, well, people kind of assume because humans are made out of 70% water that they too are affected and controlled by the moon. Oof. There's actually a whole book called The Lunar Effect talking about the scientific evidence on how the moon affects our behavior and our choices and it talks in depth on how to sync your daily activities with the moon cycle to maximize everything that you do. Well, if you really talk about it, like the lu lunar um, yeah. calendar oh, is yeah. based on the moon. <gasps> oh yeah! Oh really? Yes! I didn't like oh, yeah. it's just being based on the cycle of the moon. That's why like that's the whole Chinese holidays, everything's based on the moon, moon cycles. Oh. So the full moons festival or New Year's festival, everything's based on the moon. Is that why your like birthday changes every year? Yeah, your birthday changes because this, the calendar of that is it's different from. And uh, back in the days, like mm -hmm. people also have a calendar that tells you what day you should do or shouldn't do certain things. Back in the days in China, you get married, you need to pick a lucky day, like a good date. You just oh. don't go on any oh, date. To get married. Yeah, you need really? to pick a good date, yes. I guess it's one of those things, if you believe it, you believe it. it, it then it's that real. It just happens. <laughs> right, everything you do is because see, of that. I see. It's yeah. like astrology. I find no yeah. harm in believing it, because I myself don't know if it's real or not. I kind of believe in astrology, right? But I'm not going to meet someone and immediately say, what's your sign? I fucking knew it. Yeah, I mean, like, what does that mean? I get so insecure when people do that to me. I'm like, what do you mean you knew it? I don't understand. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Did you know that I was gonna cry too based off of my sign? Because I'm fing crying. Well, some people actually judge you by yes! what your astrology yeah. is like based on that. And then some people will be get cancelled in the comments are like, well, like, he is a Taurus. Anyways, like apparently there's a whole science on when to cut your hair based on the moon cycle to maximize later hair growth. Wow. It sounds crazy, but some people have tried it says it works it really works. Really? So again, another huge claim is that the moon makes people impulsive and emotional. The word lunatic actually comes from the Roman goddess of the moon, Luna. For example, Lunatic police, yeah. is from the moon. Luna. Mm, lunar. Wow, lunar. Wow. Mm. Luna. And for example, police and medical staff claim for no reason at all, they have no reasoning, okay, that nights with a full moon are especially chaotic and they get weirder calls. 
A detective that worked in the UK, he did a study, right? A correlation between certain days and increased crime rates because there was a discrepancy. It's not like it was just the weekends, right? Mm -hmm. One of those days was payday. That makes sense, you know, people get paid, they want to go to the bars or whatever. But the other day that had an association with increased crime rates was the full moon. What? That's interesting. Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. I would say it's probably because it's brighter at night. That's what I was thinking. So you stay out later. Yeah, or you it's easier for them to commit crime yeah. because they can see better at night. Yeah. But isn't that bad though? But it's still night. And like run. Yeah, but at least you can yeah. see. It's better than a rainy ass day that you yeah. can't oh, yeah. run or cloudy that you can't see anything. Like it's home burglaries go down during rainy nights. Goes down? Yeah. Because oh, it's like great. rainy and you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, great. it rains so much here. <laughs> yeah, it rains so much here. I love it. <laughs> it got to the point where they increased patrol force numbers to full nights, like to full moon nights. Dang. Yeah. What? Uh, it's kind of insane. I mean, I don't know. The whole thing is. Maybe it's, it's all the weird. werewolves, like. We're <laughs> <laughs> like fucking dancing uh, in the moon. <laughs> And according to Chinese legend, I think Chinese people love the moon. Okay, you guys have a whole festival around it now. Yes, sir. The moon festival. And it all started with the legend of a pretty woman with a kind heart. <laughs> and her name was Chang Yi. Chang Er. Chang Er. And her husband, Hao Yi. Hao Yi. How do, you, how do you not know Hao Yi? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, like, yeah how do you not know? Like, we're living in this. Damn beautiful <laughs> yeah. life is all because of Hoi. Hoi? Yeah. Yeah. What, what did she or okay. he do? So he was an archer, by the way, right? And they both He's lived really, 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 oh. really strong. Yeah. And in okay. the beginning of times, there were 10 suns in the sky. And it was like so hot all the time. Like there was no such thing as nighttime. Everybody yeah. was burning up in the heat yeah. and it was affecting everyone. It was so hot that it was impossible to farm crops. The 10 suns were endangering the entire human population. Right. So what does Hoi yeah. do? Facts. Yeah, the greatest archer in the world. Fax as fuck, he grabs his little bow and arrow, and no. he's like, boom, down goes the sun. Down the sun. The sun's gone. The sun's yeah. gone. Dang. But there's still nine he's suns. Like, he's like Hercules. Left. Yeah. Oh my but God. there's Probably still stronger. nine. That's crazy. <laughs> You're going to piss a lot of people off, bro. <laughs> then he goes, boom. Takes out another one. Okay. Now there's eight, right? This mm -hmm. is like learning the numbers or something. Eventually, there's just one left. Just and like he one almost left shot left. that one, too. Wow. And people stopped him. Is he just like feeling that he's having like, fun with it? Yeah, yeah. he's there, he's like, Momentum. shoot, 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 shoot. shoot. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. It was going so well, right? So then the, the murderous heat wave was gone, leaving just one sun, and the reward, the queen of heaven, gave Hao Yi an elixir of life. She was like, thanks for your service. Now this elixir essentially is going to make whoever takes it immortal. They can go to heaven. He was like, thank you so much. But on the inside, though, he was conflicted. She had only given him enough for one person, but why would he want to be immortal if his wife wasn't immortal? So instead, he gave it to Chang'e to keep safe, and she put it in a little case near her Chang dresser. Chang'e is the wife. But one day, she noticed one of his friends, his little beady-eyed friends, mm -hmm. eyeing up the elixir. It's mm -hmm. actually his one of his students. Disciples, it said, yeah. Mm. So then Hao Yu was like, I gotta go teach my other disciples how to shoot down sons later, just in case they come back up. <laughs> okay, okay. So anyway, this <laughs> disciple was like, okay. eh, eh, I'm sick. Yeah, they stole it from Mean Girls. And he sneaks into their house, wanting to drink the elixir, but Chang'e already caught on. Mm. She ran to the dresser, grabbed the elixir, and she popped it in her mouth. The and wife. she starts feeling the movement oh. through her body. Uh -huh. And she starts yeah. floating. She probably yeah. bonked her head on the ceiling. Uh -huh. And then she's floating out of the house. <laughs> okay. And floating up and up oh, and yeah. up until she sat on the moon. He flew to the she flew to the moon. What the freak? Talking yeah. to the moon. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and how was so broken. No, no, Chang -er, Chang -er. no, no the whole Ho Yi was so broken when he came home and he found out what happened to his wife. So he shouted at the sky for his wife and surprisingly discovered that the moon was really bright and it looked like his wife was like sitting on the moon. So you know on full moon days, you look at the moon, you see the shadows, right? Yeah. You, you can see her shadow. It's a girl. Nah, there's no way. Yeah, if you look closely, it's a girl sitting there with a little bunny next to her. Mm -hmm. That's the Chang moon. The full moon. Yes, the shadow figure. It's her with a little bunny next to her. Mm-hmm. Yo. Come on, man. And he immediately made moon cakes because that was her favorite. <laughs> He put them on the table for her as a shrine, essentially, for his wife who left, and she became the moon goddess. 
and everyone started making her mooncakes and offering her fresh fruit for blessings in return. Anyway, that's how the moon came about. But like, why do we want to go there? <laughs> I don't understand, okay? I don't understand. Now, the actual story of why we went to the moon is not as romantic. In fact, it was anti-romantic. It was a pissing contest. Yes, you guessed it. Yes, the USA, the USSR, the Cold War. The two biggest dickheads had a dick measuring contest. Just kidding, all countries are dickheads, not the people, but the governments, usually all of them. So both of them are trying to do shit in space first because space is unclaimed. They just want to get up in there and piss on everything. What's interesting is that the USSR kept a lot of their space race efforts under a curtain of secrecy. Not even a veil, a thick bulletproof curtain. They were like the kid in the school that's like, oh my god, no, I didn't study for the test. Meanwhile, they're literally drinking 29 Red Bulls trying to study, but they will never, they will never ever let you know. They won't even let you see their notes. That's the USSR. They were super secretive. They never admitted to any failures, any troubles, and each report they did eventually release was bombarded with technical data. It almost felt like it was trying to overwhelm the reader with a mountain of math and physics. Now, at first, the race was just to launch stuff into space. Then the race turned into trying to launch humans into space and eventually get them to the moon. Which, like, side note, why don't we ever try going to the sun? <laughs> like, why not the sun? Oh, that would have been know? great, though. That would have been great. <laughs> so, November 3rd of 1957, which animal was the first to be sent into space? Come on, we learned this the hard way. Did we learn this in history? We also learned this on the Are We Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? And we oh all failed. Oh my god, wait. <laughs> it's not a dog? Is it? It's a dog. It's a dog. I thought it was, I answered a chimpanzee. Wait, yeah. why, why is it a dog? Oh, it just happened? Yeah, the Soviets famously sent the first dog into space, Laika. Her name is Laika, which is such a cute name. And it's actually a really depressing story. I don't know why I said it's so upbeat. But Laika's original plan was to spend 10 days in space and then come back to Earth. But the USSR shot her up there and was like, we never really planned on how to get her back. Mm. And they knew it. But they sent her out anyway. And at first, they claimed that Laika died when oxygen ran out and she died peacefully. But decades later, in 2002, it was revealed that Laika died from stress and overheating because while the craft was being ejected, the AC system failed and like, it's pretty hot up there. Ooh. So she did not die a peaceful death. And just a few years later, they sent out Belka and Strelka into orbit. Okay. Two they, more dogs? Two more dogs. Okay. They safely returned. And in response to this, the US wanted to up their game. So they sent a chimpanzee into orbit. Guess what his name was? Bob. Steven. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong! Ham. Ham. His name was Ham. And then they spent Enos into orbit. It was a three orbit flight, but Enos only made it to two orbits because there was malfunctioning on the spacecraft and he was electrocuted close to 76 times. But have no fear, they're like, it went pretty okay. It didn't die. So let's send the humans now. Now, this is actually another milestone that the USSR won. Yuri Gagarin was the first ever human to orbit the Earth. He orbited the Earth one time. How long do you think it takes to go around the Earth? 108 minutes. Wow. We're not talking about Delta flights. We're wow. talking about spacecrafts, y'all. That's an hour and a half, right? Yeah. Right about Wow. Honestly, shorter than I thought, though. That's so, crazy. like, yeah. And uh, when it was time for Yuri to get back to Earth, Earth to Yuri, he actually ejected out of his spacecraft at around 23,000 feet, fell to the ground in a parachute. Now, this was covered up by the USSR for a long time because technically, space travel requires that the person in orbit lands safely with the spacecraft. So, if you eject yourself out of it, uh -huh. technically, it doesn't count. What? So, they literally lied and was like, yeah, yeah, he safely landed with the spacecraft. Which is kind of crazy. Yuri became the USSR's baby, their son. And like he had this emotional upbringing. Like he was born into this war torn times. His, his house was taken over by Nazis. He remembered that his whole family was forced to live in a mud hut and feed German soldiers or be threatened to send to a concentration camp. Like it was insane. The way that he even trained to become an astronaut or to become like one of the, you know, space people, crazy. He joined the Air Force. Like, this kid comes from nothing. He's not even, like, Russia's elite, right? Or the USSR's elite, sorry. He's not even part of, like, the USSR's elite. He just practiced and practiced in the Air Force. And then he signed up for the space program. This is how they picked the first person that they would orbit the Earth. 
they had parachute training. Each participant had to complete between 40 to 50 jumps from low and high altitudes over land and over water, and um, you pass if you don't die. Nobody had been to space before, so technically they were just shooting in the dark. The idea was like, hey, let's just put these guys through everything and anything that we can think of just so that they can be somewhat prepared because we don't know what happens up there. They had to go through oxygen starvation tests, which means that they were locked in this isolation chamber and the air was slowly pumped out. They were put through a centrifuge, yeah, where they endured heightened g-force. I think this training is still used today on astronauts, and it's a popular scene in a lot of movies. You know those scenes with those crane-looking things, like those big machines with the arms? You put the person at the end, and then it just, just like, f like them this? around. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. let's fucking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like Six Flags. Right? Yeah, but like it's so much worse. Yeah, <laughs> bro. Like, <laughs> like this is supposed to simulate the effects of G-force. Yeah, he had to do that. And aside from the physical training, Yuri had to do mental training, where he was put into this um chamber. It was a complete isolation chamber. You know those silent chambers that you see a bunch of YouTubers go to, where yeah. the only thing that you can hear is your own heartbeat and your own breathing. Oh, I would try that. Bro, I would last one second, not <laughs> even. Yeah, so Yuri spent 10 days alone in that chamber. 10 days? Yeah, which a lot of YouTubers have tried. And like, not, on, not only is it really hard to do 10 full days, not just isolated in a room, but a fully silent chamber, but um, 10 days, yeah. Dang. That's insane. So anyways, he becomes the first man in space. And the USSR is winning at this point. They got the satellites up there first, the first animals, the first human in space, but they would ultimately lose the biggest race, the showstopper, the grand finale, the race to the moon. Because July 1969, Apollo 11 and its crew became the first humans to land and walk on the moon. The journey lasted eight days and three hours from the moment they took off to Earth and the moment that they landed back. Now, the actual spacecraft did not land on the moon's surface. I think at the time, the technology, they couldn't... I, I, mean, I don't know if it was the fact that like they couldn't take off again from the moon, or if it was the fact that with the moon's weak gravitational pull, I'm not really sure. So either way, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, they descended onto the moon's surface in a lunar module, while Michael Collins had... I mean, this is so sad that his name is like the lesser known one, but he stayed in the spacecraft. And he was essentially waiting for Neil and Buzz to get out of the airport terminal. Do you know what that means? Because when you're waiting for someone to get out of the terminal and you've already gotten to the airport, mm -hmm. what do you do? You just drive around. Because you can't stop, you're gonna get yelled at. Uh -huh. So you just do laps. So he was doing laps around the moon. How long do you think it takes to orbit the moon? How long does it take to orbit the moon? And how long do you think he had to orbit the moon for this mission to make sense? Uh, well, it took, it took them three hours for the whole trip. No, eight days and three hours. Oh, eight days. He said three hours is a trip to the next town over. They were boom boom to the yeah. moving back. I can't even uh, get to New York eight, in three hours. Eight days. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably two days. You think he orbit around the moon for two days? Yeah, I would say maybe a day. Half a day. 12 28 hours. hours. Oh, a day. Dang. And every 47 minutes, he completed one lunar revolution, meaning he circled the moon once every 47 minutes. And here's the crazy thing. Half of the moon is pitch black and he has no communication with Earth. He would be on the dark side of the moon half the time. Dark side of the moon. Dark side of the moon. He was completely alone in space for half of the 28 hours and the media went fucking crazy. You know, they were like the loneliest man in history, Michael Collins. <laughs> Michael Collins got back to Earth and like Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were like getting all the hype and like, oh my God, how is like walking on the moon? Oh, yeah. And Michael Collins, all they <laughs> asked him was like, how lonely were you? And he said, okay, well, they always asked me, Mr. Collins, weren't you the loneliest man in the whole lonely history of this lonely planet by your lonely <laughs> uh -huh. self behind the lonely moon in this lonely orbit? Weren't you terribly lonely? <laughs> End quote. End quote. <laughs> but in all seriousness, Michael said, I had this beautiful little domain and it was all mine. I was the emperor, the captain of it, and it was quite commodious. I had warm coffee even, mm -hmm. and it was nice. Hmm, some alone time he got, yeah. huh? Wow. He got a little bit of recharge. He probably liked it, actually. <laughs> but imagine I'm, like, dating you, and you're, like, going all the way to the moon. You're, like, making it your life mission just to get some alone time. Yeah. You gotta get to the moon. Hey. That sounds nice. Call NASA right now. Speaking of NASA's training, okay, the Apollo team was a bit different from Yuri's training. It, it was 
they did some comical things too. They had the astronauts suspended sideways at an angle. So they were literally hanging them off of cranes at an angle and they were told to jump and run around and like do all these fucking flips. And the researchers would stand there and take detailed notes on how each astronaut in training responded to each task. If you got motion sick, this is not the career move for you. Mm. NASA also had mu muscle memory training where they had the team enter and exit the lunar module to help build that muscle memory to help them re just replicate these activities on the moon. Mm -hmm. NASA didn't want to worry about how the astronauts would take a sample of moon rocks or even take a photo, so they literally practiced over and over and over again until, until it became muscle memory. They were forced to wear spacesuits all the time to get used to it. And I know what you're thinking. I too can scoopity doop some rock off the moon. That doesn't sound hard. <laughs> But it's actually more nuanced than that, apparently. It's like insane. The team brought back 47 pounds of lunar samples, which was a huge deal. Because it's not like you can just scoop up the moon rock and put it in your little baggie. There's safety protocols, and on top of that, they wanted to get deeper to see if there's like soil, what's going on down there. Yeah. That is cool. I do would like to know what's on the moon. Yeah. Yeah. Or how does it feel? Yeah. Yeah. What is moon rock? Also, I think I would be very depressed as an astronaut. Because imagine coming back from something like that, like a high like that. Mm. The adrenaline of your life, the experience of your lifetime, and it's not like you're fucking going to Florida. Mm. Like you can never redo it, usually. True. Mm. And then the rest of it, like you've worked your whole life for that, and then you did it, and yeah. now you're like, fuck Earth. My legs are jello. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to be here. Yeah. I want to be out there. Fuck Earth. You don't think that's kind of depressing? So anyways, NASA replicated a 500 foot by 500 foot site to replicate the moon. This is where more conspiracies are born. They chose this site that had rocks that look like the moon. They used a bunch of TNT to blow it up. And honestly, they did a really good job making the area look like the moon. And today it's open to the public. So if you can't afford the Elon Musk prices to the moon for your honeymoon, just try Arizona. It's in Arizona. I heard it's a nice spot. Also, the moon surface is pretty much like a desert. So Nevada could also work. Now, back to the moon rocks. The US eventually collected 840 pounds of moon rocks over the times. We are hoarders. So that scientists could just experiment, see what they're made out of, you know. But let's say you want to own a moon rock. Why wouldn't you? How much are you willing to pay for a moon rock? $10. <laughs> 10 grand. Damn. Damn. Um, Damn. Well, you're going to jail. It's illegal for private citizens to own or buy authentic moon rocks. You set me up. <laughs> <laughs> because they are considered national treasures. Mm. So I'm going to snitch. <laughs> Which, side note, the fact that moon rocks were brought to Earth debunked the theory that moon was made out of cheese. Because the moon looked like cheese, so for a while people thought that moon was made out of cheese. Right, That's for sure American <laughs> conspiracy theory. Because right. we think they're moon cakes. <laughs> 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 we think it's like a little rice cake. <laughs> it's, a, it's a duck. Yes, it's sir. a duck. <laughs> that does. Like a tip of the moon. Duck. Yeah, it looks like duck. <laughs> anyway, that's the tea. Soon after, a guy named Bill started writing about what I call what he called, and I quote, America's thirty billion dollar swindle, because it took us thirty billion dollars to get to the moon. <laughs> Yeah, which is really just a drop in our bucket of our trillion dollars of debt right now, but that's fine. <laughs> don't even think about it. It's like credit card debt. If you don't think about it, it doesn't exist. So Bill said he was an employee of Rocketdyne, a company that helped design the Saturn V rocket engines. Mm -hmm. Now, he personally didn't know anything about space travel. Listen, he's smart. He's a really smart cookie, but he was a technical writer at the company. Me <sighs> Essentially, he was a glorified emailer, a messenger of sorts. He wasn't a rocket builder. He wasn't a rocket scientist. He didn't have the most glamorous position in the company. And that's not to dog on the guy. Like I said, he's smart. He was a former U.S. Navy officer. He had a bachelor in arts of English. So like smart, yeah. Does he know anything about rocket science? Absolutely not. But him, being an English major, self-published a book called We Never Went to the Moon, America's $30 Billion Swindle. So he's the founder of the conspiracy. Yeah, there was some like little sh 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 whispers, um. but then he was like, I'm going to make a book about it. Mm. Now, at first it didn't get much steam. A lot of the flat earthers started coming around though, and they really hyped it up. And you're like, wait, why? Right? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. Because the moon is flat too. Because they never went to the moon, because if they went to the moon, then the earth would be flat or some shit like that, okay? Mm. They were like, it makes sense that NASA's a lying ass because NASA keeps lying and saying that the world is like a globe. And mm. we're not a globe. We're flat. 
Have you seen it? Have you seen it with your own eyes, Devin? Mm -hmm. That the Earth is globe. Hey, you know what though? Mm -hmm. Like when I did the skydiving, you can see the sad end of the the globe. It's a it's a curve. Wait, we yeah. saw the red red bull like the the guy that jumped. Yeah. Yeah, but red bull is also part of the scam, conspiracy. You know? Yeah, conspiracy. they they fund NASA. Oh, really? The rocket fuel that NASA sure. uses is made out of red bull. They feel it with Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Red Bull gives you wings. Also, my thing is like, listen, I love a good conspiracy theory. I really do. I just don't understand when you make it your whole personality because like at the end of the day, the world sucks so much. We have no equality. Housing prices are out of this world. Inflation. But you want to argue with me about the shape of the earth it doesn't matter cindy no that's my sister. <laughs> that's sister it doesn't matter karen it doesn't matter the shape of the earth i don't even have reproductive rights do you think i give a fuck about the shape of the earth right now i don't i'm sorry i can't do this right now it's just it's so confusing to me anyway um they kept saying like pics or it didn't happen but as i had pics and um they just said, do they have the metadata though? We need to see the metadata. <laughs> metadata. <laughs> Meta what? <laughs> metadata. So they had the pictures. Yes, they did. But Bill and a lot of people claim NASA faked the photos with the help of dun 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 Walt fucking Disney oh, Studios. <laughs> but it's pretty freaking wild. So let's talk about the pictures. The shadows on the moon. Now, this one has a fairly simple explanation. A lot of conspiracy theorists hated the fact that the shadows are not parallel and that the spike is pointing to the left. But like the sun isn't just at a specific point at the moon the whole time. And even on Earth, when the sun is low in the sky, it affects your shadows. That's why your shadow sometimes looks bigger or longer or slanted. Mm. That's kind of a thing. Yeah, but they were like, no, mm. it's not parallel. Then the radiation situation. I feel like that kind of has been debunked quite a bit with more splice exploration that's been going on. You get what we've been doing. Now on to the next. Just knock these bad boys out back to back. Why are there no stars? Typically, when you're trying to take an artsy photo of a man in a relatively dim, dim lit space, you might adjust the lighting. And Buzz Aldrin would have had a really hard time with that camera, okay? It's literally camera mechanics. That's all. Ta try taking a pretty picture so, of the stars. Yeah. I just learned this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it's so fascinating. You know how sometimes when you take a picture with your iPhone, right? Inside of your room, your room let's say the outside is super bright. Mm -hmm. When you focus on the outside, the inside of the room seems completely dark. Right. Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. But when you focus on the inside of the, the room, it's the nice. window is completely just white. You don't see the outside. It's more... Um, common when you use a DSLR. What's interesting, your eyes, when you look at it. Oh, he yeah, was telling me about yeah, this. Yeah, when you look at it, it doesn't seem like the inside is completely dark. Outside is completely white. Like your eyes don't focus on the outside and then the inside gets dim and like vice versa. It's almost like everything is illuminated. Your brain is so good at balancing the brightness. That's uh, so they, cool. But, That's but the truth so cool. is inside of the room is actually pitch black. Uh, why were we talking about I this? I actually didn't know. Oh, because they were like, no stars fake. Oh, why yeah. no star spangled banner? So in order to capture those stars, you have to bring the exposure very, very, very high. That's why when you have like a really pretty sky and your mom takes a picture and then shows you later, it's like the ugliest it's, picture yeah. you've ever f***ing <laughs> seen. And Bro, you're like, why facts. are you showing me this? I can Google prettier pictures. Like I'm getting nothing out of uh -huh, this, mom. Uh -huh. That's why, okay? Dang. That was debunked. Then the biggest one. The waving flag. There's no wind. How does it wave? Mm. Ghosts. Mm. Mm, that's a really good one. It's probably Chang'e. You should call NASA. Yeah, Chang'e be f***ing up shit, huh? <laughs> she said... It's Chang'e, yes. Well, NASA had put a lot of thoughts into the moon landing. And the American flag sticking it, like this was, this was the epitome of their measuring contest. Like they wanted to really capture it. The American flag had to be there standing at attention, right? So what they did is they didn't want the flag. You know how usually you get a pole mm -hmm. and the flag is hanging on the pole like this sideways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But because of the weak gravitational pull and there's no wind, it would just kind of fall. Yeah, It'd be it would really just ugly. Hang like this. Yeah. So then they put another pole here. No way. But then, because it was like folded up mm -hmm. during the whole eight days, when they unraveled it, it was fucking wrinkly. And people say it looks like it's floating. Yeah, it looks like it's. So windy. staying still, but it's just wrinkly. Yeah, it's just yeah, wrinkly. Pretty much just wrinkly. And you can even see the top part, there's literally a pole sticking through it. Yeah, I mean, you would imagine that if Walt Disney and NASA came together and the US <laughs> government came together, they would fire the fucking intern that brought the wind machine to set. Like, you don't think so? That's true, that's true. Like, I'm sorry that they did not bring an iron with them. Now, 
Anyway, the moon landing conspiracy sparked so much controversy that Fox aired a primetime special called Conspiracy Theory, Did We Land on the Moon? And as the spreader of, of interesting news, a poll was aired after the specials were aired twice. And at first it was like maybe less than 10% of Americans thought the moon landing was fake. But then after the specials, close to like 20% or more of Americans thought the moon landing was fake. Oh. And that NASA and Walt Disney did an elaborate photo shoot in the Nevada desert. And you can actually still watch this quote documentary on Netflix. I mean, albeit it does come with the tags um, controversial and provocative, but it's kind of weird. Like, it's just a bunch of experts breaking down why no star. Why no star in sky? Why wind? But I get it, you know, conspiracies are fun. I guess this is one of the more less vile conspiracies you know there's yeah. some even more evil conspiracies out mm, there that really do sure. hurt a lot more people i guess this one is just like interesting food for thought mm -hmm. so next time that your uncle is sitting there at thanksgiving listen just let him have it <laughs> just say <laughs> ne, ne. Yeah, I agree. but uncle have you thought about um going to buy raycon.com slash biz yeah. because i could use some noise isolation right now <laughs> So make sure to check Raycon out and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye!